In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph y equals tan x as well as uh, the secondary trig functions. Now, uh, to graph y equals tan x, let's think about we, what we already know. We know that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x, and we know that cos x equals 0 when x is um, you know, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. And it's a, there's an infinite number of values in both directions there. So uh, we're going to have vertical asymptotes at those values because literally the denominator equals 0. Okay. So we draw our vertical asymptote in, and now we remember that uh, the value of tan x is equal to the slope of the terminal arm. Now, at angles of uh, negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0 pi, 2 pi, etc., the uh, slope of the terminal arm is 0. So we can put those uh, points down there. Now, the slope of the terminal arm is 1 at certain values also, and it's negative 1 at certain other values. So we can put those points on our graph. And now uh, we can treat asymptotes like asymptotes and graph the curve, and ultimately the curve is going to look like this. That's what the curve of y equals 10x looks like. Now in between the vertical asymptotes shown, we have a few key points. We're going to focus our attention uh, on uh, this one cycle. This is a periodic function that has... Um, uh, you know, the same period repeating over and over an infinite number of times. So what we're going to do, we're going to focus our attention on one of those cycles, and specifically the one uh, in between the two arrows there. And we see there that there are certain key points that we're going to need to know. And um, we're going to, now that we know that, we're now going to... Um, graph one complete cycle of a transformed curve and state the coordinates of three key points and determine the equations of two vertical asymptotes. And we're going to use our parent function will be y equals tan x. And specifically, we're going to use this, uh, that cycle right there. And we're going to transform it. So let's go through the steps. We're pretty good at this from other questions we've done. Uh, when y equals negative 3 tan of 2x plus pi over 4 plus 4, uh, first thing we need to do is uh, factor out the 2, and um, we're going to have uh, a is equal to negative 3, k is equal to 2, d is equal to negative pi over 8, and c is equal to 4. And of course, even before we did that, we uh, moved the 4 over to the end. And uh, we're going to talk about the three key points first. Um, we're going to take three key points from the parent function and put them through the mapping formula. Now, the mapping formula, as you will recall, is given right there. Now, if you have a teacher that taught you a different way of doing it, that'll still work for all of these, uh, for this type of a question. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to take uh, the point negative pi over 4, negative 1, and we're going to put it through that mapping formula using the values of a, k, d, and c down here. When we do that, uh, we end up with a point on our transformed function of negative pi over 4, 7. So the image of negative pi over 4, negative 1 becomes negative pi over 4, negative uh, positive 7. Then uh, we're going to transform the point 0, 0. And using the same process, the image of 0, 0 is negative pi over 8, comma 4. And um, the image of pi over 4, comma 1 is 0, 1. And um, we're now going to discuss the asymptotes. Now we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2. To determine where those asymptotes are transformed to, we're going to put each of those x values through the part of the mapping formula that states x maps onto x over k plus d. So um, taking uh, the x value of negative pi over 2, uh, we divide it by k and add d. And we end up with a value of negative 3 pi over 8 when we do a little bit of arithmetic. So we see that there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 pi over 8. Um, we also do the same thing with the uh, value of x equals pi over 2 because there's a vertical asymptote there. And putting that through the mapping formula, we get a, uh, another vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 8. So we see that what we've got are a couple of vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3 pi over 8 and x equals pi over 8, as well as the key points shown here, the coordinates of which we established on those earlier slides. 
And now we try to mimic the behavior of a tan curve. And those are vertical asymptotes. And uh, we try to treat them like that. And uh, we do our best job of sketching that graph. Okay. Now, what if we had y equals cotangent x? Well, we're going to take a similar process here. We know that cotangent x is cos x over sine x. And following a similar strategy of putting vertical asymptotes where the denominator equals 0 and determining where the y value should equal negative 1 or 0 or 1, and then treating asymptotes like asymptotes, we see that the graph of y equals cotangent x ends up looking like what you see right there. The vertical asymptotes are at the same values where sine x equals 0, i.e. the denominator of cotangent x. And those values are negative 2 pi, negative pi, uh, 0 pi, and 2 pi. And in between those uh, vertical asymptotes, we've got uh, certain key points. And uh, that cycle is going to repeat itself every pi radian. So it's similar conceptually in some ways to a graph of uh, uh, y equals tan x. Now, how about cosecant x? Well, to graph that curve, it's good to think of it as y equals 1 over sine x. First, what we can do is graph y equals sine x. And then uh, we can recall our work on how to graph 1 over f of x. What we do is uh, sketch a vertical asymptote at every point where uh, we have an x-intercept, where sine x equals 0. And then what we do is we identify all the points where the uh, y value is either negative 1 or 1. And those are easy to find because they're simply the maximum and minimum points on the curve. Uh, that's where x is 1 or negative 1. And now we're going to treat increasing intervals as decreasing intervals and vice versa. We're going to treat the asymptotes like asymptotes and we're going to get a curve that looks like this. We're going to have vertical asymptotes at the values shown. And um, we're going to have a few key points in between certain um, uh, vertical asymptotes. And we're going to have that uh, period of 2 pi radians. That cycle will uh, repeat itself every 2 pi radians. And for secant x, we'll follow a similar strategy. Uh, we know secant x is 1 over cos x. And so we'll graph y equals cos x. Uh, make sure to put a vertical asymptote at x e each x-intercept. Uh, we have... Um, we're going to look at the points where uh, the y-coordinate is negative 1 or 1 and treat increasing intervals as decreasing intervals, etc. And uh, when we do that, we get a curve that looks like the one you see there. Okay. We see that we've got certain regularly spaced uh, vertical asymptotes and certain key points. And um, our period will uh, our period is 2 pi. Uh, the, period will, the cycles will repeat themselves every 2 pi radians. Thank mm -hmm. you.